La ilaha illallah. I just don't want to speak over the adhan. So thank you everybody for your patience for that. It's one of the blessings of living in this country that you get to hear it like that so beautifully. Thank you so much, Amen, for that incredible speech. And I know we all got so much out of it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our very first fireside chat of the day, we're going to be looking at cutting edge technologies driving advanced biopharmaceutical development. And to do just that, please join me in welcoming to the stage Hale Hamadifar, the chairperson of Synergen, and your moderator, Ramya Faraj, senior presenter and producer at Forbes Middle East. Thank you, Sally. Welcome, everyone. We are so excited to be hosting the Forbes Under 30 in Abu Dhabi for the first time. I can't think of a better place to be spending the day today. Beautiful weather and gorgeous location. Now, I am joined by someone who took a diagnostic company with 12 employees and scaled it to a biopharma giant with 5,000 employees operating in 40 countries. Dr. Hala, you really inspire me. And I need to know about the myriad challenges I'm sure you faced along the way and how you dealt with those challenges as they came. Uh, thank you so much. It is a great pleasure to be here in Abu Dhabi in this event and in the very nice weather. Um, and with the under 30 people full of energy. Uh, Are you guys full of energy? <laughs> <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> so, um, Yes, really, it, it, the journey was full of challenges because um, having a uh, large scale production of a high tech biopharma product is uh, even a challenge in the big pharma companies. And uh, we made this uh, uh, from the beginning and uh, to have a large scale production. Uh, also, the whole value chain uh, from the research and development till the end of the production and uh, even the patient support uh, in one entity is also very difficult. And also the, these products, uh, the bed to bench um, life cycle is six to ten years. So it needs a long term perspective besides a very agile uh, and productive approach. So it is uh, something that we, although we have a, la a, um, a long term perspective, uh, we uh, have saved the momentum in every step, uh, from, even from the time that we were 12 till, till now that we are more than 5,000. It's an incredible journey that you have been on, and we know that it's a very complex process to develop and manufacture these products. Tell us about some of the cutting edge technologies you are employing to execute your strategy as fast as possible. Uh, yes, you know that the biopharmaceutical products uh, originally are uh, genetic engineering products. And the biosimilars are proteins, so we need a sequence uh, of the gene to be inserted in a cell line, and this cell line should be stable, and we should check all of the steps with different and complicated uh, methods uh, to be sure about the quality from the cell line development till the end of the filling and packing. So. Uh, different uh, um, technologies of um, upstream, downstream, and different methods of quality control should be involved and implemented um, in the entity who wants to produce this product. Give us an idea of some of the technologies you're using to do so. Uh, so we are uh, we use the uh, cell culture technology by, by the bioreactors and uh, also because the, we uh, are um, uh, having the, the the EU GMP the European Union uh, standard certificate for the production lines of these products. So every step should be under the control, and you can do it. The, another technology is. 
the, um, the computer system validation that we should implement during our production. Uh, so it is uh, uh, different kinds of technology coming together, the biotechnology, the pharmaceutical technology formulation, because we should give a formulation that is compatible with the body and also saves the quality of the product. Let's go back to how you actually grew your company, scaling to 40 markets when you were operating in just one, increasing your staff from 12 to 5,000. What strategies did you implement in order to execute this massive feat? Um, you know that the, uh, the basket of the products uh, that uh, we have in Synergen, uh, about 30 different biosimilars, is something unique. Uh, and uh, there is not any other um, biopharmaceutical manufacturer to have this um, basket. Uh, so it gives us uh, uh, the, the opportunity to uh, serve uh, dif different products to different markets. As well as our um, flexibility in deals, we have the in-licensing uh, deals, the tech transfer, the co-development, and also because uh, I am coming from the quality sector, the quality is uh, a, a very, very important issue in our company. And it is the cornerstone of the regulatory bodies all over the world who want to register these products. So because we, from the beginning, we uh, look for the international uh, quality aspects, it, is, it makes us uh, very much more easier to uh, approach the different markets that now from the Latin America to Southeast Asia, about 40 different countries, uh, the patients are using our product. Let's talk a little bit more about the tech transfer aspect of this. It plays a huge role in scaling your operations. What have been some of the most rewarding and some of the most difficult aspects of completing tech uh, transfers? You know, tech transfer is not uh, only about the techniques and expertise. Uh, I believe that it is about a culture. Uh, and first of all, for technology transfer, you should have the culture of the, that industry and this product. So the biopharmaceutical uh, products, uh, because uh, the time to the market is very long and needs a long-term um, perspective, so it needs more uh, to first implement the culture an attitude of this product production than the uh, exact technology and techniques. And also uh, regar um, regarding the rewarding of tech transfer, because nowadays um, most of the countries are looking for localization of this product, so tech transfer uh, may give us this opportunity to approach uh, the different uh, markets. What would you say are some of the most important trends in the biopharma industry right now? And how is Synergen positioning itself to really capitalize on these trends? And nowadays, mostly uh, biopharmaceutical um, industry focused on the, uh, on the orphan disease and also um, a specialized medicine. So uh, Synergen also have some projects uh, regarding this. We, are, uh, we have um, some of the uh, products for orphan disease in our pipelines, as well as um, studying about the technologies for personalized medicine. Now, I would like to know, as a female leader in the biopharma industry, what advice would you give to other entrepreneurs, such as the ones who are listening to us today, particularly women who are looking to break into highly technical fields? What is the best way for them to do so? Um, from my humble opinion, uh, I think in, uh, that the laser focus on the expertise is uh, very important. And uh, also the, the 
ownership mindset uh, in the companies. And uh, also, I have um, adopted a, a practical approach to uh, learning and education. So uh, I think that uh, in these days, because there is a lot of opportunity and the, uh, the boom of the, um, the technology, there is different um, uh, opportunities for the young people to uh, enter and uh, work and be active. But you should find uh, something that you really want to focus and invest all of your life and the most important uh, asset of yourself, which is your uh, youth on that. So very quickly, we have run out of time. Should they go for what they love to do or should they go for what they're good at? I think uh, based on, or on uh, your love, find the best opportunity. Thank you so much for sharing the story of your remarkable journey with us and congratulations on the great work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much.